Hi, I'm Tyler False. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Gazat's videos called Three Ways to Destroy the Universe. I'm going to tell you right now, none of them involve nuclear weapons. They're not that powerful. <laughs> Let's take a look. One day the universe will die. But why and how? And will the universe be dead forever? And how do we know that? First of all, the universe is expanding. And not only that, the rate of its expansion is accelerating. The reason? Dark energy. Dark energy is a strange phenomenon that scientists believe permeates the universe. Until 1998, we thought that the universe must work a bit like a ball that you throw into the sky. One of the interesting things about dark energy is, since we know so little about it, it's kind of this thing that we're going to say, hey, this exists to make an equation on how we understand the universe better. Kind of like when nuclear uh, reactions were first a thing. The neutrino, we weren't really sure it existed yet, but it helped balance out the energy and the spin and... It didn't have, neutrinos don't have any mass, so it was just energy and spin to help balance out a, a decay equation that we knew it was there. It's like we were, I don't know, accountants um, trying to account for, some, for something on both sides. It's like, hey, this has got to exist somewhere. We can't observe it yet. And lo and behold, the uh, neutrino was discovered years later. So it's... Hopefully, once we get a, a better idea of what dark energy is, we could probably have a better explanation for it. But I wonder if, it's, if, if that's going to turn out that way. The ball moves up, but at some point it has to come down again. But the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up. That's like throwing faster. the ball up and watching it fly away faster and faster There's and the faster. Star. Where is this acceleration coming from? It's got an well, engine on it. we don't know. <laughs> from we dark call energy. It dark energy. Einstein thought of it first, and then decided it was stupid. Now, astrophysicists have decided it is plausible. Trouble is, this is all very theoretical, and we don't actually know what the properties of dark energy are. But there are various theories, and they lead us to three scenarios for the end of the universe. I've actually heard of these. Uh, let me see if I can guess. So big rip is when things accelerate so quickly that it tears itself apart, and... Heat death is death by second law of thermodynamics uh, due to <laughs> basically everything getting far enough apart and freezing, temperature equalizing as the universe continues to expand. But it doesn't expand in a way that it tears itself apart. And big crunch and big bounce. I'm actually not sure about big bounce, but crunch is when universe expands, levels off, and then gravity pulls everything back together. Interesting ideas. I think there's a few other ones, though, but I guess this video says three ways to destroy it, not all of the ways to destroy it. Cool. One, the big rip. Since it's birth, <laughs> like that. the universe right. has been expanding. For unknown reasons, new space is created everywhere equally. The space between galaxies expands, so they move apart. The space inside galaxies also expands, but here gravity is strong enough to keep them together. Mm -hmm. In the Big Rip scenario, the expansion accelerates up to a point where space expands so fast that gravity can't compensate for this effect anymore. The result so crazy. is a Big Rip. At first, only large structures like galaxies are torn apart since space Spans between the single objects expands very fast. Next, big bodies like black holes, stars and planets die. Their gravity isn't strong enough to keep them together. I wonder so how they long this would take. Their components. I guess with an exponentially in the end, increasing space would expand faster expansion. than the speed of light. Atoms would now be affected and they would just disband. Atoms don't look like this. One space. <laughs> no, they don't, but it's a convenient model that's been ingrained in a lot of people's minds. I mean, including when I went to to high school, they showed like this this model, but yeah, the electrons are really this big cloud thing because you're not exactly sure where they are. They're not on a stable orbit like the solar system, for instance. And the nucleus is way smaller, but consists of over 99% of its mass. Um, 
One analogy I heard before was the atom is an entire uh, baseball stadium and the nucleus is a mosquito on second base and said mosquito weighs 99% of the stadium, so it's an ultra-dense mosquito. That's, uh, that's pretty silly. Expanding faster than light, no particle in the universe can interact with any other particle anymore. Sad. The universe oh, will dead. dissolve into countless lonely particles that won't be able to touch anything else in a strange, timeless universe. Hmm. And you thought you felt lonely. <laughs> Two, heat death or a big freeze. In a nutshell, the difference between the big rip and heat death is that in a heat death scenario, matter stays intact and is converted over an incredibly long but finite period of time into radiation while the universe expands forever. But how does this work? Let's talk about entropy. Here we go. Every system tends towards the state of highest entropy, like when we have a latte macchiato. Initially, it has different regions, but over time they will cool down and disintegrate until it's uniform. And this also applies to the universe. So that, that little example right there of it showing from uh, cooling down to room temperature, um, one thing they kind of left out is room temperature is probably one up to 20.001 degrees or whatever, because uh, that energy does go to the room and it is absorbed, so the energy is balanced. Um, it's just the room is so much bigger than the coffee or whatever fancy drink that was. The second law of thermodynamics says unless you do work on the system, you can't go the opposite direction. You got to go from hot to cold. So you couldn't go from say, it, it couldn't have went down from from like 20 to 19.9 and the coffee at like 130 degrees or something. <laughs> I don't actually know what the boiling point of coffee is, but it's probably around 100. But anyway, that's one of the things, the reasons why it is the way it is, and that expanding outward, the heat's going to be absorbed by that massive amount of space. That's a, that's a pretty good illustration of, of how that sort of thing works. De death by second law of thermodynamics. So while the universe gets bigger and bigger, matter slowly decays and spreads out. At some point, after lots of generations of stars, all the gas clouds necessary to form stars will be exhausted, so yeah. the universe will turn dark. The remaining suns will die. Black holes will slowly degenerate and evaporate over trillions of years due to what's known as Hawking radiation. That process for a stellar black hole or even a or, or supermassive black hole is even longer. We're talking 10 to the 60th to 10 to the 100th power years. So it's a very, very long period of time for these black holes. When this process is complete, only a dilute gas of photons and light particles remains until even this even decays. Even a gas at that point? Probably All activity not. in the universe ceases at this point. Entropy is at its maximum, and the universe is dead forever. Unless Theoretically, it might be possible that after an incredibly long amount of time, there might be a spontaneous entropy decrease as a result of something called quantum tunneling, leading to a new Big Bang. That's cool. It's very uplifting. Three, big crunch and big bounce. With, so just to add on to that, that end of scenario two, if, you really, if it really is forever and an infinite amount of time, that thing will happen. Even things that have an extremely low probability of happening will eventually happen. So that's... In scenario two, that's that's a bit uplifting in that it's not it it can't stay like that forever because forever everything that's possible to happen will happen eventually, even creation of a new universe. This is the most uplifting scenario. If there is less dark energy than we think, or it decreases over time, gravity will be the dominating force in the universe one day. In a few trillion years, the rate of expansion of the universe will slow down and stop. After that, it reverses. Galaxies will race at each other, merging as the universe becomes smaller and smaller. Since a smaller universe also means a hotter universe, temperatures rise yeah. everywhere all at once. 100,000 years before scenario. the crunch, We're background cook radiation everything. would be hotter than the surfaces of most stars, which means that they would be cooked from the outside. Minutes wow. before the big crunch happens, that's, atom that's, cores yeah, are ripped the apart the cold before part. massive black holes, <laughs> holes devour everything. 
Finally, all black holes would merge into a super massive mega black hole that contains the <laughs> entire mass of the supermassive universe. Supermassive. And in the last moment before the Big Crunch, it would devour the universe, including itself. The Big Bounce Theory How does states it that this itself? has happened a lot of times and that the universe goes through an infinite cycle of expansion and contraction. Okay, yeah, I've heard that before. I've just never heard it referred to as Big Bounce, but sure, just a complete cycle of, uh, like in Ouroboros, or however you pronounce it, cycle of, of um, destruction and creation. Very zen. Well, wouldn't that be nice? So what will actually happen to the universe in the end? At the moment, heat death seems the most likely, but we at Kurzgesagt hope that this dead forever stuff is wrong and the universe <laughs> will start over and over again. We don't know for sure either way, so let's just assume the most uplifting theory is true. It's a good outlook on life. Uh, so it's interesting, uh, so too, the heat death one's kind of like Ragnarok from Norse mythology, and then the third one with the big crunch, but Greg Brown's the rebirth um, has uh, kind of the whole classical uh, Armageddon uh, look to it. Not sure about the big rip. I can't think of any old mythos or stories that involves something like that happening. Let me know down below if there is something like that. That one's a little out there, but interesting that even in the depressing uh, big freeze scenario, heat death, that there's still a chance of eventually another universe coming around. I like that Kurtz Kazat has a very optimistic view on even depressing scenarios such as this. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.